Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. It's now Wednesday the 25th of April 2018 and I'm about to spend seven days using an ASUS Tinkerboard as my only computer. Yes, this is the start of my Tinkerboard week. And what I hope to discover is how robust, how reliable the Tinkerboard is running a wide range of real-world applications and I'm also planning on conducting some cooling and other performance tests. So, here we have the star of our show, an ASUS Tinkerboard. And in case you're not in the know, this is a single board computer, same form factor as a Raspberry Pi, a 1.8 gigahertz quad-core processor, two gigabytes of RAM, so a bit more powerful than the Raspberry Pi. And specifically, this is a Tinkerboard S, which is the latest version of a Tinkerboard. Here's the previous version, the first version, just to compare them. The first one's slightly more colorful already, but the real big difference is other than a few changes to power management and, and the HDMI connectors and things. The main thing about the new board with Tinkerboard S, it's got 16 gigabytes of EMMC onboard flash storage. So this week, I don't have to boot this from the uh, micro SD card. It's got the SD card slot down here. I might use that for storage, I'm sure, in fact, I will. But the operating system, TinkerOS, is running from that EMMC flash storage. As you can see, I've got it mounted upon a little uh, mount on my homemade uh, single board computer mount, which will keep it slightly out of trouble this week anyway. And in addition to that, the only thing I need in terms of hardware is a power supply. The Tinkerboard is known to be a bit picky about its power supplies. It demands quite a lot of power. So I've got myself a new power supply in honor of this week. This is what a, a Yukon power supply. It's even got in the, in the little switch. Look, you can uh, flick it on and off. And the main thing here is that this will supply three amps of power to keep the Tinkerboard happy. It's actually quite difficult to get hold of a micro USB power supply that supplies three amps because the normal limit is a two and a half amps or 2.4 amps. But this is uh, three amps, so it should work well with the Tinkerboard. So there we are. And obviously I need to get this connected up. And if I just, by the magic of filmmaking, a link to a later in the day, here we are on my Tinker OS desktop. I've been filming this morning, but after that, I've been doing a bit of stuff on the web, uh, using YouTube and stuff. I'm sure you would, you would guess that. And I've also been working in LibreOffice Impress on this presentation, which started life in, in PowerPoint many, many weeks ago, but I've been polishing it up today because I'm delivering this presentation, this lecture, tomorrow in the University of Nottingham. So tomorrow, when I see you with a Tinkerboard, I'll be out on location and hoping the Tinkerboard will work in a lecture theatre. Greetings. It's now a Thursday, the second day of my Tinkerboard week. It's about a six o'clock in the evening. I've just finished giving a lecture here in the University of Nottingham. You might see up behind me on the screen there, there's uh, some slides which I've been controlling with, uh, with this, my wire keyboard. And I'm in this uh, really big lecture theater, as you can see. There were loads of students here not very long ago, but they've all, all gone now, gone home to have their tea. And uh, you can see here the Tinkerboard, which has been working very well. It's been connecting it here and running very reliably for the past about three hours or so, connected into the lecture theater system. The power supply I got clearly must be working fine because there's been no problems at all. It's been absolutely stable, which is really good. And if we are cut to a shot of the uh, screen it's projecting up to, you can see how I've been running my slides in uh, LibreOffice if I close that down and then uh, if I maybe come out of LibreOffice, we'll get back to the, uh, the desktop. And you'll see I've also been showing a video which worked fine from the, uh, the Tinkerboard. And if we close that down, there we are. We've got the uh, Tinkerboard desktop, the Tinkerized desktop, being projected 30 feet wide here on this lecture theatre, which is, is nice to see, isn't it? Anyway, that is it, I think, for now. I'm rather tired. I've just been doing a couple of hours of uh, lecturing. And so I think I'm going to wander home, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Well... Here I am back again, it's now Friday, the uh, Tinkerboard is back at home, all connected up and working absolutely fine. And I've spent a lot of today working in a LibreOffice Writer, doing a report and a quote for a client. Can't show you that, obviously, it's slightly more complicated than this document here, but it was all working absolutely fine. One point I would make, though, is to make my documents work properly, bring them across from, from Windows, and indeed to make my uh, PowerPoint presentations work fine yesterday in LibreOffice Impress. I had to bring some Windows fonts across onto the Tinkerboard by copying the files onto a USB drive, bringing them to a Tinkerboard and clicking on the fonts. And initially that didn't work, I couldn't install them because I had to install this, the font viewer, which for some reason wasn't installed by default on the Tinkerboard. So I had to go into a terminal and install the, the font viewer using the command I'm sure I'm showing you on the screen here. 
And uh, once that was done, I could bring across files from Windows machine, click on them, um, obviously fonts I've got licenses for, and, uh, and install them. So for example, Verdana is installed here. What will we do without Verdana, that lovely Windows font? So just be aware of that. If you want to do work on the Tinkerboard, make sure you've got the font viewer installed and you can bring fonts across. The other thing I've been playing with today has been uh, audio and video stuff. These are the files actually from yesterday I shot in, in the lecture theatre. And I thought, could I actually do some editing on the Tinkerboard? It was a bit of a stretch. I thought I'd have a go. So I installed Caden Live. There it is, look. And it does run up. And uh, there we are, Caden Live on, on the Tinkerboard. And uh, I've got a little edit here. We just did one of the shots from yesterday. You can see me down there in the lecture theatre. But um, I have to admit, it doesn't work properly. If I try to play this, Greetings. It's now a Thursday, the second day of my Tinkerboard. As you can see, it will play the audio, but we don't get video. And this is not about having the wrong thing selected here. I've messed around for a long time trying to get this to work. I can't get video to come out on, on the Tinkerboard in Caden Live. So it'll run up. Something's missing. I've been trying to get things installed that might be missing, but I can't make it work. And I'm working here with proxy clips. I'm not stressing the hardware too much. I'm using proxy files, but I can't make it work. However, what I can do, and this is quite handy, I can extract the audio from a clip here. So I can go out there and extract a nice WAV file from that uh, video clip. And that is useful because it means I can edit the audio from this week's video um, before I, I get to do the final edit when I'm back on a real PC, as it were. So uh, let's close this down. Uh, do we want to save that? No, we won't bother. And uh, I've installed Audacity. And I've had a lot of success using Audacity on, on the Tinkerboard today. It's a very nice audio editing program, Audacity, free audio editor for any platform, and it runs very nicely on the Tinkerboard. I'll try and open up uh, the file I've just exported there. There we are, look. And that'll bring in, hopefully, I'm slightly worrying. Oh, there it is. Look, that was slightly strange for a second. Let's have it a little bit bigger because we can. Um, now, if we play that, greetings. It's now a Thursday, the second day of my Tinkerboard week. Yes, that, that plays absolutely fine. And just worth pointing out, the Tinkerboard has got much better audio than many other single board computers, certainly better than, say, a Raspberry Pi. Great audio out of its 3.5 millimeter jack, good audio from HDMI. And as I say, you can use Audacity very well. So I could here go in, for example, and start uh, cleaning up this clip, maybe grab um, a noise reduction profile there to start some noise reduction. And having taken that, we could then go and do effect and uh, noise reduction itself. Let's assume the defaults have worked for now, and that would start to uh, clean up the clip, extracting the noise from the rest of the clip, etc. So I could very easily clean up this clip in Audacity on the, on the Tinkerboard. And indeed, I think I will do that. I'll go and unsort it out now. So I will leave you for today, having shown you, you can't really do video editing on the Tinkerboard, but you can do audio editing, and I will get on with that. Right. Here I am again, it's now Saturday afternoon, the uh, Tinkerboard is still working very well, but one of the things I have noticed, particularly when I was trying audio editing yesterday, is the Tinkerboard can get rather hot. Its heatsink can get very warm, even things like the USB ports can warm up quite a lot when the board is really stressed out. So what I'm gonna try and do this afternoon is to get it running a bit cooler. And I thought the first thing I would do is just to take some temperature measurements of the Tinkerboard using its uh, existing, its stock heatsink. So to do that, I've got a little script written up here, which is similar to what I've used many times before in a Raspberry Pi. Uh, it basically is a bash script, as you can see at the top. It'll clear the screen, it'll set up a loop, which will run through five cycles. It'll use this bit of code here to take a temperature reading on the Tinkerboard. This bit of code to run sysbench to factor prime numbers up to a 20,000. That that's just to stress out the processor to bring it to maximum utilization for a bit of time, so it really is doing some work, he heating the thing up. And then it'll finish off and do a final temperature reading at the end of that. So this will run for about, I think, eight, 10 minutes, something like that, to, to stress out the processor with consistent temperature readings as we do that. Might be worth maybe bringing up the, um, if we go into system tools, the task manager. The task manager here shows a CPU usage at the top, so it might be worth having on the screen there. Let's uh, move that one down to make things a bit clearer. And we'll bring up now a terminal where I've got the uh, command ready to execute. It's test sh, could have given it a better name, but I didn't. Anyway, let's execute that uh, script and it'll start out giving us a temperature measurement. We have to divide these by a thousand because obviously that's not um, that warm. It's 37.272 degrees in theory at the moment. 
And if I flick that down here, you can see our CPU usage has now gone up to 100 as it runs through this. So I'll skip out of real time and let this script complete. And there we are, the test has finished. And as you can see, it got pretty warm, almost 75 degrees in just over five minutes. Rather strange readings in the middle there, rather a strange temperature curve, but who are we to dispute real world physical findings? And what I'm going to do now is try and make the Tinkerboard run a bit cooler. So I've disconnected it. I'm not going to fit a fan, as you might have guessed. I'm actually going to change the heat sink to once a lot bigger. I'm going to try and reproduce something I did on a Raspberry Pi uh, not that long ago. So I'm going to remove its heat sink, which is only attached with thermal tape. So I hope it'll just come off quite easily like that, as it did. And the heat sink I'm going to fit is uh, this one, which is a large heat sink. As I said, I've fitted this to a Raspberry Pi 3 in the past. It's worked very well. And uh, I can't just plonk this on top directly because it would uh, short things out. So this has got on the, on the underside of it a piece of copper attached using a thermal compound. And this will hopefully mount on top of the tinkerboard. I haven't tried this yet and it won't actually uh, contact anything it shouldn't and it will actually hold in place and it'll give us a big heat sink there. I, I need to uh, make sure it isn't actually contacting over there. Maybe I need to turn this around a bit. Anyway, I will sort this out and we'll hold it in place using this little uh, piece of plastic and change the mount around a bit. It'll look something like the Raspberry Pi looked uh, here when I tried it on a Raspberry Pi. And uh, by the magic of filmmaking, there we are. We've now got the large heatsink attached to the, the Tinkerboard. Looking rather nice with its bigger heatsink there. I wonder if it'll run cooler. Well, it should. And so I'll go back to a desktop and we'll uh, run the test again. We'll start it off again and we'll see what results we can obtain. And there we are, it's finished. And to be honest, some slightly disappointing results. I was hoping to knock a bit more off the temperature than we have here. Just kept it below 70, but still not, not brilliant results by adding the bigger heatsink. I should say, in the end, the way I put this together was to attach the piece of copper directly on top of the system on a chip on the tinkerboard using thermal tape. And then there was thermal tape on the heatsink itself, which was positioned on top of that. And Maybe that wasn't optimal. I'm sure that wasn't optimal. Maybe if I'd used thermal compound, it would have been improved. We could add a fan. We could try all sorts of, of other things. But that's going to be the end of my Tinkerboard cooling experiment for today. And just to say, if you're interested in such things, in a couple of videos' time, I'm going to be trying out all kinds of different cooling solutions, both passive and active, on the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B+. Anyway, that is it for today as part of uh, my Saturday of Tinkerboard week. And I will talk to you again tomorrow. Greetings! It's now Sunday afternoon, almost two o'clock, and I've already had a very productive time with the Tinkerboard today because I wanted to work on a diagram, and so I've installed Inkscape, the uh, structured drawing package which I've shown you on your channel previously, and this works very well on the Tinkerboard. It's uh, slightly laggy if we just to change to the zoom factor there, you can see it just moves around a little bit, but um, it works perfectly well. You can do your structured graphics work in Inkscape and uh, you know, lots of tools available. So I'm really pleased with that. I had to get this diagram drawn. I thought I'd have to wait and do this after the end of my Tinkerboard week, but no, I've got it done in Inkscape and it's worked very well. So I'll just make sure I have saved that and we'll uh, close this down. Anyway, it is of course Sunday afternoon and so we all know what's about to happen. It is time for the release of another Explaining Computers video. So here I am in YouTube. Look, it's uh, due to release at uh, two o'clock. Uh, not sitting on the channel yet, it's currently private. It's a video about Windows keyboard shortcuts. I have no idea what you'll make of that, but it seemed a good idea at the time. And uh, I should just say more broadly that the Tinkerboard is a very good machine for using on the web compared to many other single board computers. It's got its two gigabytes of RAM, slightly better graphics capabilities. It does lag slightly. You do get the odd drop frame watching YouTube, but nothing that you really notice. It works perfectly well. But anyway, it's almost time for this video to release. So uh, let's just let the uh, clock tick over. And there we are, it has released two views. We can see someone's made a comment already um, and not a very nice comment, there we are. Uh, but uh, anyway, let's look at other things down here. And uh, has anyone seen that video? Yes, there we are, Stephen Thompson is first. We'll give him his little heart and things. Um, gold medal to you today. If I can type and even did on camera. Watch next week. There we are. This is now the, uh, the past for you. It's the future for me. It's very exciting, isn't it? Anyway, 
I will continue to do some YouTube stuff, uh, replying to comments here on uh, YouTube, because it's always good to do that on a Sunday afternoon. The Tinkerboard is uh, doing well for me. Let's just check it's there in analytics. It's actually a good test of a uh, web capability running YouTube and analytics, which is because it's quite a uh, processor intensive, but hopefully it'll work. Shall we see if it's there? I do enjoy using the Tinkerboard. I've, I've really got on with the Tinkerboard this week. And uh, is it, yes, it's starting to show some data. It is, look, four views of, uh, of that video already. So anyway, that is it for today. I will get on with answering some more YouTube comments as hopefully they will come in fairly soon. And I will talk to you again tomorrow. Well, it's now Monday and the Tinkerboard is still working fine, still smiling at me on its desktop. It's actually Monday evening. I spent most of the day out doing client related stuff. I've not actually used a computer for most of the day, which was a quite nice now and then to have a day not going near a machine. But this evening I'm back to doing various uh, admin related things. I think we, we could call them using the machine here, using the Tinkerboard. And I thought that gave me a good opportunity to show you that you can use the Tinkerboard using here the Chromium browser to access a lot of the standard cloud applications and they work very well. So here, for example, I've been at Google Drive, Google Docs. I can open up, say, uh, this script file I've been working on, which is a start of a script for a forthcoming video on Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus cooling. I always write a script. I don't always use it, but uh, it's always good to have one written just in case. Let's be, let's be wild and say welcome to yet another video. Uh, I won't say that, of course, in the final video, but we'll stick it in there to show it works. I've also been accessing many times this week my Office 365 account, uh, which works perfectly well. You can get to all these online Office applications. You can get into things like uh, Outlook 365. That works absolutely fine. And you can use things like the, the online version of Word that we have running here. I should just say perhaps that often it's difficult to run the online versions of Word and things like Google Drive and Google Docs well on the Singapore computer, but they do work fine on the, uh, the Tinkerboard. So that I thought was worth sharing with you. Why do we always have to have this horrible ribbon in Word even in the online version? Let's get rid of, of that. Anyway, there we are. I just thought I'd let you know you can run all the standard cloud applications very well on a Tinkerboard. Well, it's now about eight o'clock in the evening on Tuesday the 1st of May, which means my Tinkerboard week is coming to an end. And it's been very successful. I've managed to run a wide range of applications on my Tinkerboard this week, not just the ones I've shown you, but also things like Kodi for media, playback, GIMP for photo editing. Everything has performed very well. The one thing I was worried about at the start of the week was stability. The Tinkerboard has a bit of a reputation for being unstable because it has to be delivered so much power through its micro USB power connector. But I've only had one crash in the whole week. And uh, given I've been using the board for about 25 to 30 hours, that's, that's pretty good, I think. And the one crash I had occurred when I was trying to get Caden Live working. I was doing lots of installs, sort of messing around in the terminal. And uh, after I'd done the classic computer thing of turning it off, turning it on again, everything was fine. So I think I've proved if you use a decent power supply, like the Yukon uh, power supply I've used with its nice little uh, switch, you can have the sick Tinkerboard working in a very stable fashion. So that is the end of a Tinkerboard week. If you've enjoyed watching, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.